Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, welcome to the next presentation. Uh, here I have the pleasure of welcoming uh, Obson. And uh, with us today, we have uh, Vice President and former CEO, Per Wahlberg, and also CFO, Johan Brandt. Uh, me, myself, I am Simon Granot, for those of you who doesn't know me. Um, with that said, uh, I'll leave the word over to you. All right. Thank you all for coming to this presentation of Ovson. Um, as he said, my name is Per Wahlberg. Uh, I'm the founder and uh, uh, vice president of Ovson. And Good morning. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, my name is Johan Brandt. Uh, I'm the CFO of this company since September last year. So I've been with the company for one year now. Uh, and uh, today we will present uh, Ovson briefly. Uh, and we will wrap up with questions uh, during the last five minutes. All right. Uh, Ovson is a company providing a satellite-based mobile broadband service. Uh, over the last years, we are providing a unique service, a unique end-to-end -end service, supported by five leased satellites. Uh, we do have offices uh, in Stockholm and also two offices in, in the U.S. Uh, you find our customer groups within government, media, NGOs, and other like Maritime. The company was founded in 2006, and uh, during the following years, we developed this service during like seven, eight years. And the service has been in service or in operations since 2014. So you can see that we have sales since 2014, and we have been stable revenue-wise since 2016. If we look at different communication methods, I think you are all familiar with mobile connection, a fixed connection. We are getting used to stay connected more or less 24-7. Uh, if you look at the satellite connection, which we provide, uh, we have global coverage. With almost just three satellites, we can cover the whole globe. And we're not that dependent upon local infrastructure. So if you look at mobile connection or fixed connection, it's dependent on, on a significant investment on local infrastructure. But with the satellite connection, we are not dependent upon local infrastructure. All right, so if you're looking at <clears throat> the market, the satellite service market, so it's a, it's a you know, big market, $130 billion, and increasing, you see slight decrease the last, last year, and it has to do with the distribution of TV, as more and more is done terrestrially. But otherwise, it's, it has been growing. Um, and if you look in the right column, these are the two segments that we address. The MSS, MSS stands for Mobile Satellite Services, <clears throat> and uh, uh, you know, sat down to satellite uh, telephone size terminals. But the segment we address is the, the ones that use it for data transmission. Um, and in addition, FSS, Fixed Satellite Services, uh, and uh, this is VSAT networks and such, and, and where we then can provide terminals that are smaller and, and have high throughput still. Then uh, there is, a, in fact, a third area not included in this uh, segment here that we believe is important, and that, <coughs> that there, there is no satellite solution today that can, can meet those requirements. One example is smaller drones. They might have the, the endurance and range, but they are limited by their, their terrestrial tele, uh, communication link from ground. So if you pass a building or a, or a tree or, or a mountain, you will lose connection with it. With a service like ours that enables a very small antenna, you can, you can put that on top of this drone and get what is called beyond line of sight capability. And the need for bandwidth there is, is quite large. So. When we designed our system then, we designed, designed it to meet a number of uh, customer core requirements simultaneously. And those are, as you see then, mobility, uh, uh, where w which means that to have the terminal as small as possible, 
because as a user, <coughs> what you see is actually the terminals. It's important that it's you know, as portable as, as it can be uh, physically. Um, high data rate, and not just to receive data, but also to transmit. A lot of our customers are very transmitting intensive. Uh, low cost, obviously. Uh, secure and robust, meaning that even if it's a cloud in the sky or bad weather, the signal should get through. Uh, we have also developed or developing a, a, a unit that will be placed on our satellite to be launched in two years that is called OBP, onboard processor. What that can do is that it can connect a small antenna directly to another small antenna without going through a big antenna, a hub in the, in the middle. So, so that's a, a big advantage. Single hop, it's called. And then, of course, ease of use again. That um, you know, whichever customer segment should be able to use it without any special training. So, who has a need of mobility broadband services then? Well, uh, we focus very much on the, the, the first three areas here uh, currently. So, it's media, government, mainly defense, and what is called non governmental organizations. And um, today, the main revenues comes from, from the government side. But we believe that a service that enables mobility broadband, is, is the need is universal, uh, but we focus very much on, on, on those segments today. But if you look to the right there, for example, the uh, maritime, there is nothing to stop. A satellite is way out there, so it's very easy to cover uh, you know, land as well as sea. <clears throat> and then you can, um, uh, of course, then you can use much smaller uh, antennas on smaller, smaller ships uh, and so forth. And also airframes, uh, aeronautical information, uh, 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 communication. How do we then position ourselves against other offerings? You see two axes here. Uh, the, the horizontal here is mobility. And the more mobile a system is, the, the smaller is the terminal you interact with. The other axis, the vertical one, is, is throughput. And this is transmit throughput. It's harder to transmit than uh, to receive. Uh, in the lower right corner here, you see, again, the MSS, Mobile Satellite Services. Maybe you heard about the names uh, Inmarsat, Iridium. Global Star, very small terminals down to hand handset sized, uh, but, but really designed for voice uh, when it started. Uh, Inmarsat is pushing the highest MSS rate, and they can do roughly half a megabit, megabit today if you can get an open channel, which is not likely because it's, it's, it's very little bandwidth in total. But, and also very expensive. Every time you use it, um, it costs a lot. See, uh, 256 kilobit costs $16 per minute. Um, so it's, it's rather expensive. Going all the way up here, you have the other s category of offerings, and that's FSS offerings, fixed satellite services. And then the equipment on ground becomes more, uh, less, uh, you know, mobile. Maybe it's an unfair picture, this big truck you see here, but in US it's still a lot of the cases where you come to TV, uh, some, some, some sport game or something like that, they come with these big trucks. Uh, what we do then is to take the ease of use and, and portability of the MSS operators with the higher throughput that you can achieve from, the, from these type of operators. And of course, if, if you have something that you want to transmit, the, the, the higher throughput you have, the, the faster you, you can transmit it. So it's, uh, it's um, important for many customer segments. Okay, so what happens uh, during the last year? The company was listed back in May 2018, and we are following our plan. And the board of directors decided to take the next step uh, during the fall which meant that we decided to start our project to launch our first own satellite. So uh, during the fourth quarter last year, uh, we initiated a, um, a rights issue, which we closed in January this year. So we increased our equity with another 70, uh, 750 million sec. We also closed the remaining part of the financing um, challenge with another 750 million. So now we have the full financing for our first own satellite, which will be launched in 2021. Uh, 
So that's the 1.5 billion project. As you remember, we, we launched our service based on least capacity. And we still run our service based on least capacity. But from 2021, we will add capacity with our own satellite, which will be launched in, in 2021. Uh, in April, we also got our first order uh, related to our own satellite. So we signed an order with Intelsat of 56 million US dollars. That's an order uh, of capacity for a number of years, two to three years. So they have actually committed to buy capacity on our first own satellite, Ovson 3, which will be launched in 2021. We also signed up for, for a, a capacity agreement with Intelsat because if you looked at our revenue, they were more or less flat over the last three years. And it, it has been a challenge to find capacity within our frequency band and, and the right coverage area. So when we uh, discussed with Intelsat and uh, realized that there were an opportunity to find capacity with the right coverage area and the right frequency band. We, we signed up for a, a, an agreement with them, securing capacity for a number of years on their satellite named IS-39, which was launched in July this year. We also signed an agreement with another satellite operator named Hispasat. Hispasat is a Spanish operator covering in Spain and, and South America. So we have also secured capacity for those regions. Uh, so now we can address customers uh, also in South America, which is important for, for our growth. Can I add one more? Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, Intelsat, for your information, is the world's largest satellite operator. So it's, it's, it's a good indication that we have something unique when they, uh, you know, uh, order on our coming satellite. So if you look at our figures, uh, as I said, our service was launched in 2014, uh, and we grow uh, quite uh, dramatically over the first three years, up to 200 million sec. And since then we have been flat, and that's related to some limitations in available capacity. If you look at our margins, they're also still uh, strong, and uh, you can see a slightly decrease in our operating profit, and that's related to, to the decision that we actually took a decision to go for our own satellite. And we, when we took such a decision, we also accelerated our R&D activities related to uh, satellite, the satellite side, but also the terminal side. So when you look at figures for 17, 18, and also this year, uh, we do have an impact of accelerated activities within R&D um, to be able to launch our own service. If you compare uh, our current service and our call it future future service. Uh, today we run a service based on least capacity. Tomorrow we will run a service based on our own capacity, including some least capacity. So we will not replace all least capacity. We'll, we will have both. But when you look at owned capacity and our own satellite, we will see a huge step in terms of performance, but also mobility. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's throughput and mobility. And uh, when you look at bandwidth, uh, for example, today we can run the service around 20 megabit as, as per set. And uh, with our own satellite, we will probably reach up to 80 megabit or even better. When it comes to mobility, today we have uh, the smallest terminals in the world. And they will be even smaller. Uh, so they will be of the size of a laptop mini, uh, which is also a big step when it comes to mobility. We are used to have small iPhones or other cell phones. And uh, I mean, for those of you who remember Motorola or, or the change when it comes to our cell phones, it's a change when it comes to even smaller pieces. So uh, 
The terminal size is extremely important for our customers when it comes to mobility, both in terms of size and weight. All right, and, and we, <coughs> we might also add that uh, we, with our satellite, we have the, the uh, there is more available bandwidth by that, you know, you know more potential to, to hi higher revenues, but also the margins will increase, uh, you know, compared with leased satellites. So, uh, you know, long-term vision, when we started this company, the aim was from the beginning to launch our own satellites. And, and as Johan explained, it's not a, a no end in itself to launch satellites, although we think it's funny. But uh, it, it, for all these reasons he just explained, so all of the activities, almost all of the activities we have done in the company from inception has been aimed towards that goal. So that means we have a, you know, strong patent portfolio, uh, we believe. Uh, we have also uh, global uh, orbital positions to <coughs> develop this service, not just to place the first satellite, but to place more satellites over time to, be, to deploy this service globally. So we have six orbital positions with, with uh, frequency licenses uh, per today. So where we are today, um, as, as Johan explained earlier, we provide a, a, a service where we lease capacity. This is all TV satellites really designed for something else. But where we managed to, with our terminals, we've developed to create a service that is still better than the competition. Uh, we can expand now uh, the capacity with new satellites coming up. Uh, and and uh, 2021, uh, when our first satellite will be launched, uh, you know, the, the we can have more uh, performance even still and, and higher, uh, you know, revenue. Uh, the potential for higher revenues and margins will increase. But the aim is really to populate all these orbital positions with satellites. But, but every satellite is its own business case. Um, so... Our aim is uh, over a you know a number of years to to launch a satellite may maybe every second year then if if we execute according to plan. All right, so I think that was all. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, let's get right on to the questions. Um, First off, uh, you mentioned that mobility and data speed, those are the two sort of uh, key components that make your offering unique. Yes. And you mentioned that you have a comprehensive uh, um, portfolio. Um, what, what actually makes your offering unique? I mean, we are speaking of high technology here, but what makes your offering stand out from competitors? And you have a, a patent portfolio. What happens with that when that expires? Will the margin start to erode? Perhaps a little discussion on that. Sure, and and uh, of course, currently we, we can't uh, use all the the uh, the technology we have as we're using other satellites. So so the service we provide today is 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 better, but not as far uh, as good as once we get up our own satellite where we can fully utilize uh, what we have. But but the uniqueness is really the slide I showed earlier. This kind of core requirements to be able to meet those in in simultaneously. If you're a customer and don't have a need for mobility, you probably can get a better price on another satellite segment. But if you have a need of mobility, meaning small terminals, high throughput, high link availability, re regardless the, the weather, um, then we are quite unique. But if you just lock in on the price, probably, and, and can live with the, this big truck that you saw there in the picture, you know, you can find other, other offerings out there. Um, perfect. And Today, you are operating within the geo space in terms of the orbital space. Uh, there is also another space called LEO. Um, perhaps uh, our audience aren't too familiar about that, but there has been some discussions on uh, threats from the LEO segment. Um, could you explain a little bit what that relates to? Sure. Uh, I mean, to the, to the, in, a, in a context, I mean, today, you know, 90% plus of the communication through space goes through geostationary orbit. The advantage with that is that you, you, put, you put this relay station 36,000 kilometers from the equator, so it will rotate with the same speed as the Earth, so that thereby it looks like it's standing still, while we can have fixed uh, parabolic dishes. Uh, these LEO projects, there was a big, uh, what you, can, you know, it was a big, not a, a hyper, but in the, in the millennium shift, where, where LEO was big, and... Uh, you had something called Teledesic, which was Bill Gates' project. 
uh, every project that uh, wasn't launched, Teledesic, they folded uh, before, went into bankruptcy. Iridium was one. Uh, I think ISO was another one. And, and the, w the, the way we see it, I mean, this is us speaking then for sure. But, but the, the, when you have a LEO, uh, that, that's low Earth orbit. The Earth revolves and this satellite revolves, like GPS satellites, but a little bit closer. So you need to have a, a, a large number of them. And, and a large part of the Earth, over 90%, 92%, is uninhabited. Th there are no paying customers there. So you build a network this is from a business perspective. So, um, but also we believe there are still technical challenges before it's realized, uh, both and, and regulatory-wise as well. You, you have the protection frequency-wise that GEO has priority over LEO. So if a LEO disturb uh, uh, GEO, they, they need to shut it down. Um, we, we are more protected in, in, in this environment in the year. But, but again, if everything goes according to the, what, what is presented, to, to the, I mean, we still see, you know, we don't see it as a, as a real uh, competition uh, in the customer segments we see. But we do believe there are many challenges remaining um, uh, with those um, segments. Okay. Um, and we also uh, spoke earlier about the lack of availability of leased capacity that actually fulfills your requirements. Um, could you explain how the satellite network works? How man, I mean, what does that actually mean? How, wh what does the quality need to be like? And, and uh, can you also explain a little bit uh, on the different uh, satellites that you are getting access to um, in, in a shorter period, both relating to Intelsat IS-39 and the Hispasat satellite fleet? Sure. So, so as Johan explained there, we, we sell a complete end-to-end -end service in that we have terminals on the ground with the user, we have the satellite up there, where you use a certain megahertz of bandwidth and you have a gateway in the other end where you take down the signal and maybe you go fiber then over to your headquarter or the customer's headquarter. Those satellites that we're using today, the frequency band we're using, it's, it's, KU, it's called KU band, but it's slightly lower KU band. KU band is quite common. All, all the TV that you see is, is you know, most normally is KU band, but we'll use a lower part and there, there aren't that many satellites that have this uh, currently, that has this, uh, this part of the frequency band. So in order for us to be able to use the satellite at all, first it needs to have the, the right frequency band. It needs to have a certain kind of technical performance, a minimum performance for us to be able to... Its, it's ear up there in the sky needs to be sensitive enough to listen to this uh, small signal coming up. So then that's number two. Number three is that um, it needs also to cover the areas where we have a need for it. Uh, so like Johan said earlier, uh, there are very few satellites that we can use. Now with these new satellites coming up, then uh, we, we can then, it's easier to, 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 uh, to expand for us. Um, uh, so again, even if there are a satellite with the right frequency, they might have a technical performance, which makes the service performance so low that we are not better than the competition. And, and uh, so with these new satellites, they are, they are more, a little bit more powerful, and, and, um, which means that we can use them then to expand our business. And the recently launched satellite, IS-39, it's a big satellite, yes. and you have already today signed um, approximately, I think it's 200 mega hatch that you've signed from it, that you have um, announced in our press release. Yes. Uh, do you, is it possible for you to extend this lease capacity, pass, uh, capacity further on, and uh, how long are the cell cycles in terms of doing that? Yeah, I, th I think it's, it's certainly possible to increase, uh, increase the bandwidth and in, in addition with this capacity you also have steerable beams, which is good because then you can steer them. It's, it's like a, a flashlight on, on the wall. If you move the antenna, you can move. it's a big infrastructure on ground that you move then over the Earth's surface. So by having these uh, movable antennas like we will have in our satellite, you, you can have more flexibility, so, so that's good. But certainly that satellite have more available uh, bandwidth that we can uh, expand upon. Perfect. And um, in conjunction with the recent Q2 report, uh, you announced that you have changed the launching partner from SpaceX to Ariane Space. Is there any reason behind that? It's good, it's good. I mean, we had good relations with both uh, launch providers, so we had discussions with a number of possible suppliers. Uh, the most important thing for us was to pick uh, the best one in terms of price 
and launch period. And, uh, and the final proposal and offer from Ariane Spass was slightly better than SpaceX. So that's why we chose uh, Ariane instead of SpaceX. Okay. Uh, I think that's all of my questions. So thank you both very much for this presentation. And uh, let's uh, thank them with a shorter applause.